Throw out any old preconceptions of Myanmar you might have. The country is changing fast. Its people are relishing the end of their isolation. There are new opportunities everywhere, but not for everyone. This is one business that's thriving. Until a few years ago, mobile phones were almost unknown in Myanmar. Now they're everywhere. The government predicts that mobile phone use will increase from around 11% of the population now to 75% in just two years' time. Demand just keeps on going up. People are finding ways to get around the shortage of SIM cards, and increasingly they want to buy the latest models. But travel a few kilometers away from Yangon's downtown, and you enter a very different world. This is South Dagon, an industrial zone of small, sweaty workshops. Years of isolation and sanctions meant businesses here have had to make do with the most antiquated technology. Umyata builds small pickup trucks for the local market. But now that vehicles can be freely imported, he's struggling. These, he thinks, will be his last orders. We can't compete with imported cars, he said. We have to buy all the parts ourselves and assemble them here. That's just not competitive. New, modern factory zones are now being planned, like here at the port of Tilawa. Good for the country, you might think, but there is a human cost. To build the world-class industrial estates that Japanese and other foreign investors need, will require redeveloping all of this land. Now, according to this sign, the government already owns it, and that's technically true. But there is a group of farmers who used to own it, and they say they were forced to give it up for very little compensation. In a palm thatch hut, they bring out yellowing scraps of paper, receipts for all the years they paid tax on the land. The farmers are now negotiating with the government for better compensation, but still feel they've been treated unfairly. During this time of change in our country, I feel it is only we who are losing. The president told us our demands would be discussed. That made me happy. But until now, nothing has happened. She can still see it, but is no longer allowed to farm it. Land ownership is a complicated and emotive issue. But in its rush to embrace foreign investors, Myanmar risks leaving people like Tete feeling excluded from the better future they were promised. Jonathan Head, BBC News, Yangon.